Welcome to the Doggish Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to dog parents and the topics, events, and personalities impacting their lives. My name is Jason Arias, co-founder of Forever USA, the dog photography experience for you and the dog that stole your heart. With me, with me as always, is Miss Sylvia West. How are you today? Hello, folks. Welcome. Dog mom extraordinaire, extraordinaire certified pet trainer and overall amazing person. Oh, stop gosh jason um no i'm so good i'm like i'm um i'm packing my bags i'm moving are you moving where are you moving, moving. To? kansas city i'm what? out i gotta go i gotta go i'm out We're with you yeah no Let's, joke legit done, oh, you guys. no joke when we visited christy and i spent some time looking at houses there after we got back home like we love i'm just saying now. like i may move because of bar k and what David has created. Um, all right, let's get into this because this this space don't is. Don't get me started again because I won't stop. Okay, let's just all let's right. just get into it with David, and then we don't have to stop. Let's go say hi to Dave. Cool. Welcome, Dave. How's it going, buddy? It's fantastic. Yeah. It's good to good to catch up again. I know it's been a while. It's um, it, funny enough. We talked to a, another today when we recorded an earlier episode. Um, we talked to Annie um, who. Uh, wrote Presley, uh, yeah, Annie Presley, mm -hmm. who wrote yeah. uh, Sam gets adopted. It, it was super strange that you guys both booked on the same day, and I and get to back introduce, to back. yeah, yeah, and I get to introduce you to Sylvia, who we also met on the uh, Rescued Heroes road tour at that same time. So this is like a, a, a road tour reunion trip today. Oh, that's, yes, that's great for us at least. Yeah. So how, how are things going there in Kansas City? You're still rocking. I I like that uh, that zip up you got there. Yeah, a little. Uh, I thought I have something on branded today, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Bar good. You know, I think it's. Uh, I mean, per any hospitality business, uh, it's it's been a challenging year for everybody, but mm -hmm. uh, at least last year. But we feel really fortunate. We've got a lot of outdoor space, so I think people feel comfortable. They can spread out, and you know, if you just go to a, a place that has a lot of outdoor space, typically everybody's trying to pile together well here the dogs spread people out right, right. throughout the park uh, so we've got a giant space for that and then everybody seem, seems to have gotten a dog during uh, covid and Isn't that crazy, the right? truth so it's great for rescue um, that there's a lot of the dogs that have been uh, rescued that maybe in other years wouldn't have uh, so we feel very fortunate but it doesn't mean it wasn't an impact but you know it's hard to tell your sob story when there's people out there who are uh, you know have had a much more challenging time Cool. Absolutely. Is that, is that the uh, the the music that I can hear in the background? Dave? Yeah. Are you that, guys rocking it over there? Yeah, it is a full day here. We've got a uh, a full uh, crowd. We've got a line out front uh, for people getting in. We we had really bad weather the past couple of weeks, and everybody's just itching to get out and give their dogs a, a great experience. So, we've got a sixty sunny degree day, and that's sort of a perfect storm here at Bar K. Okay, thank you for saying that because I was like, hmm, what is this? Is it bark? Is it bar K? I love that. So can you ask someone who's not been there, tell me exactly what this masterful creation that you've done is and break it down? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, you know, really, bar K is an experience um, and it's a destination that, you know, we think bring together uh, people and dogs in a really uh, joyful space. You know, if you think of dogs, dogs have gone from the backyard to the bedroom. They're truly family members now. And at Bar K, we celebrate that relationship. And instead of, you know, going out and meeting up with your friends and grabbing a drink or watching live music, uh, instead of doing that and leaving your dog at home during that time, you know, we celebrate you bringing your dog here. And uh, the dogs have two acres of space, a lot of fun play equipment to really keep them engaged and their, their minds active, uh, you know, while you enjoy your time with your friends or with your dog. So, uh, Ultimately, if I had a one sentence, it's about celebrating that special relationship that we have with our pups. It, so that is so understated. It's ridiculous how understated what he, what Dave just laid out versus my experience going to Barquet the very first time. Like, um, uh, and so I walked in. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to try and not take your show, but this was like I was so excited. Oh, this was this was one of the things that I was like during the trip. Uh, first of all, we loved, loved, loved Kansas City. It was a great place to visit. If you haven't been there, Kansas City is 
a hot spot in the United States to go and have a good time. Um, but in addition, so we, we pull the RV up to this like dog park and we didn't really know what to expect, but you walk in and it's not a dog park. Like it's like the tour that we went on was a total of, you probably spent 45 minutes walking us around and it wasn't like 45 minutes and we spent 15 minutes in particular area. It's like we walked in and the, and, Okay, I'm going to I'm going to set up just a couple softballs and we'll come back and talk to them. But the, okay. even the um walking in, like the the way that the whole payment system works and what it is, like you get a membership or you're there for a day, it's almost like going to a water park as opposed to going to a dog park. And then you can go straight into the back and back into the dog park or you've got party rooms for the dogs. And like these are not kennels these are like, these are nice for go like, if you went to a pizza place, <laughs> these are nicer than the pizza places. Like there's dog art everywhere and there's bars around and there's a restaurant and it's a long, how long is your guys' bar there? Uh, gosh, I don't even know, but it, it is long. It's gotta um, be like 60 feet, got, 50, 60 feet. Yeah. And we've got a few different bar areas. So, you know, the idea that, that, you know, one day you spend an area at one bar, another day, you know, a different area. Kind of like you said, if you go to a water park or amusement park, you know, maybe one day you spend it at Epcot Center and the other day you spend it at, you know, Magic Kingdom or something. Right. So, and you can see like you can see over Dave's shoulder here, like there's there's the art in the background that I'm kind of talking about. Like these are that's giant my pictures. Dog. That's my dog. That's your, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now that yeah. picture that's above the, the bar. So that that picture that you can see on the screen right there. Oh, well, somebody was walking by. See, so that's like maybe. Oh my gosh! Yeah, for tall. scale. That's yeah. So you've got crazy. people down in the dining. Yeah, look at that. Area. You've got oh, wow. pictures there. You can kind of see. I could even take this outside when we get a. You know, at some point, people could see the park right now, and uh, it's it's pretty mind blowing right now with the, uh, you know, everybody out there and the fun times they're having. Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh, we definitely have a tour. We have breaks. We got to take a quick break. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I've gotten carried away myself. So let's take a quick break and then I want to come back to this. That sounds good. Okay. So let me get this straight. So I'm I'm walking in. I'm trying because I'm trying to give our listeners like an uh an audio experience since we can't actually do a virtual tour. So yeah. I'm coming into your space. Am I walking into a park? Am I walking into a bar? Is it like a strip mall? Is it like an airport with like restaurants all around, but instead of an airport, it's a dog park? Yeah. Well, okay. So I need to get a little more granular, I think. On the yes, please. Yeah. You know, we always think of the experience first and, uh, you know, and that's what's most important for us. And then all of the, the pieces I'm about to talk about are, are elements of that. If you think about somebody's experience when they come to Bar K, it's not one thing. It's a collection of every single interaction and every single detail that we put into it. And, and so we tried to focus on that. And, uh, you know, Bar K is, you know, part dog park, you know, two acre dog park that we've, uh, you know, used designers and, and advisors to figure out exactly how we want to design this to try to limit the number of like corners and 90 degree angles and trap areas, leave a lot of open space for running where dogs can go full speed if they want and, and sort of be in that natural run. Um, you know, we've got a full bar and restaurant where we serve uh, craft beers, craft cocktails. Uh, we've got a scratch kitchen that we do, uh, you know, responsibly sourced uh, food items, uh, anything from like, you know, poke bowls to, uh, I don't know, we've got a great, obviously a great burger that, uh, you know, is more responsibly sourced. So just a lot of different things that, that we're doing, but it's not, I think when you think about going to a dog park, you think, all right, this is, this is going to be like, you know, cheap hamburger, you know, or a sandwich. Right. Um, and I mean, I don't usually think about having a snack at the dog park. I usually think about like, ah, I'm going to go run my dog for an hour and then I'll meet my friend for lunch after. Yeah. Well, and we have, so the, you know, the space is split up into a few different areas. You have the bar restaurant and um, that's built out of 17 different shipping containers that we've repurposed. 17, uh, 17, 17 shipping containers. And this is just the building. Giant. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, 17 shipping containers, uh, you know, re reuse and uh, sustainability is a part of what we celebrate here. You know, we have 20, 24 solar panels powering about 5% of our energy here. We have recycling stations all over. So the shipping containers just 
a part of that. And they're real used shipping containers. In fact, the one I'm, I'm in one right now, um, you can kind of look and see the ceiling, right? Oh, wow. Um, and then, you know, there's, this is an office, so it's not meant to look uh, super pretty, but, uh, but yeah, then, so you've got the bar restaurant and there's no dogs allowed inside the bar and restaurant. So it's going to be a similar experience to what you would have everywhere else, uh, with, uh, some elevated options that are specific to dog people. Then you've got all the patios and dogs are welcome on the patios. It's full dine with your dogs experience. They have their own dog menu. They have a dog flight. It's like this bone shaped wood Amazing. board with a few different food options. Like a doggy charcuterie. Yeah. Kind of like that. a barcuterie, if you will. <laughs> oh, here we go. There, the puns are coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I see I'll... barcuterie on your menu, I'm going to want a piece of that. Uh, you know what? I might just uh, steal that. So uh, yeah, that looks great. I, you know what? Out of all the things we've come up with, I can say that we've never, nobody's ever mentioned barcuterie. So you should. How do you not have a barcuterie that. plate? Some meat, some cheeses, some blueberries. Come on now. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but yeah, the, the patios. The, I'll be the right back. Are, yeah. Uh, dogs are on leash on uh, okay. patios. But again, full dine with your dogs experience. And then, So, okay, hold on. Because I want to get back to this very like granular thing, because what yeah. I'm looking at behind you is enclosed. So is it an indoor patio or is the patio like on the other side of the shipping containers outside? Yeah, patio is on the other side of the shipping containers, overlooks the park. We've also got one on the ground level. I'm out actually on the second level, uh, but it's on so the there's ground. a there's levels to this thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't believe you don't have a barcuterie plate. This is this is the place <laughs> that should have barcuterie. Well, I feel well, like we're doing our boot, we're doing our barquet dogs. A disservice. It's going to be added in about fourteen okay. days to the. So main. so we've got this. We've got is the bar now is the bar ground level or it takes up two floors too? Uh, so the bar is ground level. That's the main bar in the restaurant. Then we have a bar that's we have two bars that service the, the park itself. There are three bars. Three bars. Wow, yeah. I'm gonna just move in. Yeah, I think that, we've, we've had a lot of people that want to just uh, set up a tent out there. And yeah, stay you've overnight. got two acres. Would you even <laughs> notice me in the corner? Um, okay, so, all right, so we've got the main bar level, and then we've got like an outdoor patio, second floor dining experience overlooking the park. Now, are there attendants in the park so that I could like leave my dog and go eat? Like, how does that work? Do I like check my dog in? How... Talk to me about this. Yeah, so every every guest comes through the, the same entrance. Um, and so that allows us to make sure that we know who's in the park. Uh, you know, we can find out information about the dogs that are going in our park, you know, make sure they're current on their vaccinations, socialized. Uh, so no, nobody can just come and like open up the door and let their dog in. Amazing. Um, people can either have memberships for their dogs or they can come as guests and get a day pass. Uh, if you're a human, you can just come here. Like, so let, let's say you're somebody that loves dogs, but you don't have one, or you're in a situation where you can't, you can just come and hang out like any other bar or restaurant. Uh, when you're in the park, we have dog tenders and the dog tenders are, you know, what we call our park staff that uh, they're trained in dog behavior. They go through a pretty intensive training process. Uh, but they go out there and they get to know all the dogs, uh, first name, they get to know the members, uh, they're really a trusted source. Uh, it helps because if you just go to a regular dog park, you may have one person who has a lot of dog experience and another brand new owner, but they both think they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's likely that one or both of them don't. Uh, yes. Yeah. So. As a dog trainer, that's always my biggest deterrent to just like a standard dog park is like, it truly is an owner's discretion um, to to kind of uh, judge their dog's behavior. And, you know, I'm sure you know this being in the dog world and Jason, you as well. It's like, we're not always the best judge of character for our dogs, kind of like our kids. Like, we're like, oh, they're great. But they're like the kid who's lighting everything on fire. Um, so, um, so I think that's really cool. So you've got these, you've got dog tenders. It sounds like you're really trying to create the safest, most exclusive and welcoming experience for all is there ever a time where you have to turn a dog away is that a policy you practice yeah it doesn't happen often and i think the main reason it doesn't happen often is if somebody has a dog and you've probably noticed but if you have a dog that you know is uh, so you know not well socialized or does poorly around other dogs 
this is not the environment you want to bring them to. Uh, people are, are going to point fingers at you, you know, and, and say, hey, you need to take care of your dog or you don't know how to train your dog. And uh, so we don't get a lot of the people that have really poorly socialized dogs. So that's kind of that helps the situation. But yeah, then we have a, you know, a screening process. And part of that is just a visual that our our front, we call them guest ambassadors, but they're the greeters out front and have a really important job of communicating to the park, you know, which dogs are coming in. And yeah, there are times where we have dogs that, you know, are, are showing some abnormal uh, reaction to other dogs, not, not your typical leash, you know, type of situation hey. but th that they really want to go after a dog. And when we have that, then no, we, we make a decision. They can't come in. And likewise, we've made decisions, uh, not often, but it happens where, a dog just doesn't do well in the park. Uh, you know, you have to think of it. Dogs, it's kind of like kids on the playground. Like some dogs will do great 300 days a year. And then they have one time where they, some dog runs into them or they've had a bad day at home. Uh, so, you know, there is some of that where you have to take into account, but uh, dogs who are sort of red line or really worried about, or who are showing a pattern, then we will uh, either, you know, not allow them back or refer them to a trainer for professional help. I mean, good for you. Yeah, truly. You, I mean, you're talking about it like it's a, it's a touchy subject, but I mean, I think most people will, will feel, uh, the rest of the dog yeah, owners. Like thank everybody's, you. Yeah. Everybody's going to feel safer knowing that that step is in place as opposed to like, Oh, what if he doesn't like my dog? Cause I mean, actually, most of us know that our like, think our dogs are going to be great and get along and all that kind of stuff. But, um, and I, and I think that's what was the part that I loved about this so much was that when you go to a dog park, you're just depending on other people's dog skills mm -hmm. to manage their own dog here. And how many, do you guys have maybe like 10 people that are out there kind of watching the park more? Yeah. How much staff for the two acres? Uh, it really depends on, you know, what, what the needs the are is, yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're during the week on a Wednesday and you have a lot of people co-working here, but it's not necessarily, you know, really crowded, then, you know, we may have, you know, four or five, uh, but on a day like today, a beautiful Saturday where the weather's broke, uh, we're probably looking at, I think we've got at least 10 out there. Yeah. Um, so you've got, areas. so you have professionals that are, watching the dogs and being involved. It's almost like you've got that referee so that you don't get the people saying my dog or your dog or anything like that. And it's, it is such a, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It, it took me a little while to let my guard down because yeah. this is how it goes. Sylvia, you say, okay, you look and it's vast. Like, and there's, there's, there's climbing areas and I love there's signs, no kids. And there's big climbing areas just for the dogs that the, the dogs can go and climb on. There's all of these different things. Dave should get into that too. But you sit down and you take your dog off leash and you just have to kind of trust everything's going to be okay. And they come back and they check in. Like Max would just come run up, check to make sure that I was still there having a beer and a burger. And then he would just be like, all right, dad, I'm out. Boom. And he'd go off and play again for another 20 minutes and we wouldn't even see him. But it, once you realized there was a comforting sense knowing that somebody was always watching all the dogs all the time. And you don't get the, you don't get that at some doggy daycares where the, mm. they just get put in the back while the tenants up front. You definitely don't get that at dog parks where you're just dependent on the other owners to make their own judgment decisions, and they just walk in or walk out regardless of. There's no check in process. So again, like this is also I appreciate that there's an intermediary considering pet owners are imbibing, and therefore their judgment might be slightly delayed. Um, you know. I know how Jason gets one too many beers in. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> um, but we'll take a break right there and we'll be right back with more Bar K. So we're back. So we've got this incredible, like we've got dog professionals. I'm kicking back. I'm roseing all day because I can, um, because there's someone taking care of my dog for me, basically, um, keeping an eye, making sure everything's safe. I'm having my like sustainable poke bowl on this patio with my dogs. Live I music mean, in the background. There's okay. So this is also like an event space. I take it like, talk to me about some of the cool events you guys are doing there. 
Yeah, so, you know, we do anything from doggy birthday parties, which are which happen all of the time here. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, people can come and they've got their own private space and, you know, little hats for their dogs. And it's just a, a really fun celebration of the dogs. And why wouldn't you throw your dog a birthday party? That's uh, but we've had wedding receptions. We've had an actual wedding here where the couple got married. I'm amazing. here at our day. Um, you know, again, people just any event you can think of, you know, trying to add the dog element, I think is something that people are looking to because they want something that sets apart their, you know, their event. And the other thing, if you're trying to get people to attend something, and you realize that at a minimum, half of the people that are in pretty much any group that you have would be dog owners, you know, right there, you've connected to that, that group of people by, you know, having an event where they could bring their dogs. For sure. I mean, we, my husband and I, um, in 2019, we eloped to Scotland, but we had a reception here in the States for all of our family. I'm the last of 11. So I wasn't throwing a wedding for all those people. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, but we did throw like a very like casual reception in the backyard. And I did have a dog valet because I wanted to invite all of my dog clients. Um, cause they're very much my family. They've been in my lives for 10 years, some of them. So it was very important to me to be able to include like all of my auxiliary for children, um, and I knew that I would be unavailable that week, which means this was when I was a pet sitter. So if I was unavailable and my dog owners needed pet sitting for over the holiday weekend, I was like, come on down. You can check your dog into the dog valet. So yeah, I mean, I, as a crazy dog mom, appreciate that you've created this space for people to really have their events that are geared towards their lives and include their dogs as a part of that. You know, here on the Doggish Podcast, we focus a lot on that human-animal bond and really having our dogs be members of our family. And there's so much of our world, our human world, that's not designed to include our dogs. So, I mean, what a special thing. What inspired this? What, what granule of inspiration sparked one day that you were like, I have to build this behemoth? Yeah, it's, it really came from an organic place. And I, there's a million people who have had the same thought, you know, you're in a, you get your dog, you start bringing them to patios with you. And that would happen. That's what happened with myself and co-founder Labe Dodell. Uh, we we're really good friends. And we had a big group of people that got together. And then he and I, uh, in a sheer coincidence, got our dogs on the same weekend. We'd never talked about it, uh, just got them. And then we started going to restaurants and you'd have the dogs on the leash. And of course, not a great experience for, you know, really any dog who wants to play to be stuck beside you on leash. Uh, I mean, they're probably happy to be there, but they'd rather be running around. And then you discover dog parks and those are a lot of fun, uh, hit or miss sometimes mm -hmm. and some dog parks better than others. Uh, but we'd go to those and not a whole lot for the humans to do. And, and the other question was, are the dogs really having the best experience that they could have? Um, you know, so I, I think it's a better experience than being locked up or just in the, you know, they're getting to socialize, but we thought that could even be elevated. So yeah, then the idea came up for this and we were, I'd like to say crazy enough <laughs> to, uh, to run with it and put everything we had. I mean, we both left our careers. Uh, Leib was a uh, you know, lawyer and then ran insurance uh, companies and I had done medical sales, and uh, had my own business. And we decided that we were just going to put everything into this, believing in exactly what you're talking about, that there's mm -hmm. tremendous power in the dog human bond. Yeah. Uh, and it, I think I think we've only tapped into the potential of what that can do for people. Uh, we live in a society in a world right now that, you know, people are just really polarized on a daily basis mm -hmm. and anything we can do that feeds people, something that brings people together um, and dogs, they just have a tremendous power to do that. It's really a, a special thing. Jason, yep. you look stunned over there. Are you okay, buddy? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just like, I'm um, it's just soaking it all in and I, I love this message and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm um, to be honest, it's uh, we, we have a high of 40 degrees here in Reno. And so hearing that it's like 60 and kicking back and uh, they've got like a Tito's water fountain for the dogs over there. And like, I'm just anxious to come back sometimes. It's, it's a little ways away. It's further from you, Silvio, but um, 
it's I just wish there was more of these around the country because it, it is such a great, great environment and setup. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Thank you. We're, we're working hard to try to get these at other locations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that right now we're building in St. Louis. Uh, so currently under construction there. Amazing. And then in uh, Oklahoma City, we uh, have plans to start here shortly uh, to get started there. And, and just both cities have been so tremendous to, to work with. Uh, but we'd like to get these out to as many locations as, as possible just to provide that experience. And a lot of those things that you talk about, you know, we've got doggy rock climbing wall, first of its kind. You know, we've got a doggy jungle gym, splash pool for the dogs. Um, you know, there's just a lot of unique features um, that we, we're going to bring to other markets. We've got our own stage. Uh, it's called the Soresto stage. So, you know, Soresto, the flea and tick collar, you know, sponsors that. We have live music. In fact, they're getting, the guy's getting ready to start right now. So, again, it's bringing that. You should see it. So, so like, the, the live band will be playing. And the dogs just like jump up on stage. It's like they'll be just running around up on stage too. Like everything's just cool. It, it is such a neat vibe. And like you want I mean, to just to get there, stay all day. They say there's like a fine line between genius and insanity. And I think you guys are riding that line uh, between like crazy dog people and just like absolute incredible genius so well. Um, I just, I think about. Like, I would love to have a space like this in Los Angeles, but man, we can't even get an acre, an acre for a dog park, let alone something like that. So, I mean, how do you foresee expanding into like these really big um, urban markets where we really need space like this? Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I'd say that's a very, very good question. And it's a challenge because property values are really expensive. We believe that you need to provide the dogs enough space to be able to, to really have a true experience and not a limited experience where, yeah, I can run for like 10 steps and then I have to mm -hmm. stop because there's a wall coming, you know? Uh, so it, with that, it's really working with cities that see this as an amenity. You know, we've been able to bring nearly 400,000 people down here to, to this location. And this was a part of town that nobody was here before. It was a barren wasteland mm -hmm. and, uh, right on the riverfront. So should be a great spot, but wasn't. And I think that's something we can offer to other markets is to say, do you have an area, a development that you want to turn around and bring people back to an area or, or start bringing people to an area? And a lot of these developments, they may have, you know, two acres and then two acres of parking that are just in a corner area that they're planning to landscape and and they think mm. you know we're just going to create a little park space for people well those are perfect spots for barcade and if we can go into those and somebody say yeah this this would match really well for us and provide an amenity for the people in this area uh, that's kind of how we have to do it but you're right we can't just go in and and pay you know regular land values mm. space this big where somebody where we'd be competing with a, a high rise to go in at the same spot that just yeah you can't compete with which is so unfair you know because like i would want if there was a bar k here in la i mean it'd be nuts um so today's a beautiful saturday there in uh in in where you are um 60 degrees we can see the sun shining what does a busy day look like for you how many people do you think will come through people and their dogs might come through bar k today uh well you know, it's a little bit of a loaded question only because we've limited our capacity uh, based upon, you know, COVID, COVID trying to allow people to still have the opportunity to social distance. Now, some of those um, regulations have been lifted to a certain extent, uh, but we still want to be, you know, responsible. So uh, we strict, we're, we're down probably half of our capacity um, right now. Wow. But, you know, so pre COVID times, you know, on certain days, we might have a couple thousand people um, come through on a really busy. Wow. Um, you know, I, our average is probably not that, you know, it's probably closer to, you know, under a thousand, uh, per day, but it's a lot of people and the average, people, that's a lot of dogs. Yeah, it is. Uh, people are coming in, they're staying for a couple hours. And, and because of that, I think a lot of people think, well, well, yeah, it's, it's great. It works, but it only work in downtown areas where people don't have lane, you know, have space for their dogs to run. And, and that's not what we see. About 40 per 45 percent of our members live more than 10 miles away. Wow. And the whole idea is you make a day of it. 
come to bar mm-hmm. K, stay for a couple hours, really have a good time. You're not just going to let your dog run around for a couple minutes. Um, it's an, an experience. It's an enrichment experience. And you get to be around other like-minded people too. Like that was the really cool thing. And we haven't even touched on, like there's a whole nother area that's kind of uh, like, I'm just seeing like you walk out and over to the left and that's like where the, like there was like the adoption area and like, wasn't the, like there's the small dogs area over there. Isn't that right? Yep. If I yep. remember. We've got 20, 25 pound and under. And yep. then we've got a pet finder park, which we just did an adoption event um, this morning. We do one every Saturday. So Amazing. Okay. We have to take another break. I can't believe that we're coming to the end. I it's I have so many questions still, but okay, we'll be right back after this short break. All right. Well, welcome back. That was a great conversation over break. Like we just had a like a explosion uh, uh, brain moment that we're going to like we're going to learn really cool stuff. Like we really might be cool, like, we might no, be going TV. live on tour. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Togish podcast live series. I'm so into it. All right. So we still but we still have Dave with Bar K here, so we can't I jump did. too far off to that. <laughs> Uh, so what are Dave some other... at Bar K? We're, I'll tell you what, because you inspired the live show, you can have Barcuterie. It's serious. It's, it's a gift. It's all That's you. Right. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I, I also like, uh, although this probably is the first time it's been said, but rosé all day. That's the first time I've heard that. So really, I'm going to use that. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. You could have rosé Sundays or something. Um, it's like something that that us basic girls do um no no no. it's it's very um listen i i wouldn't be a millennial if i didn't say things like that i don't think um okay so i mean i'm honestly so so you've got two new places that are getting ready to open up yeah so you're you've got one under construction and you're and you've got the the other one that you're starting to work on um like what are some other things that have really kind of grown out of this i mean like do you just love your job every single day getting to go there and hang out with because that's that's why we got into dog photography we enjoyed hanging out with dogs more than we enjoyed hanging out with people right and so guilty for dog training so it just seems like such a great place i mean it's the food and like i'm I'm going back i'm saying the same things over and over again because it's just a, a geek out place for me but i really did enjoy being there and everything that you guys are doing for the community. You know, for us, it's, uh, well, that last word you said is exactly where I was going to go. You know, to me, my favorite, I have two things that are kind of my favorites. You know, one of them is the community building and to get to, you know, meet people uh, like you, Jason and Sylvia, and, and to get to work with other people and come up with some new ideas on, you know, how we can better the world for, uh, you know, the dog human bond. And, and people's relationship with their dogs. And we've got a lot of conversations going on about different things like that. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. You know, it, it's just like any other business. I mean, it's, you know, uh, opportunity looks a lot like work. Uh, my business partner likes to say that a lot. So we've got a lot of opportunity here. I think we're going to be able to do some incredible things, but it means a lot of work. So, mm. you know, and sometimes the work isn't like the, the fun part, but you know, where else can you be working on something really difficult and then go out and have dogs come up and run and jump and lick you in the face and dogs recognize you. I mean, I have dogs that know me, you know, better than their owners know me. And, and I don't know, that's just a, a special feeling to, to have that when they come up and, you know, you can tell they're happy to see you. Amazing. That would have been something that's tough to miss during all this COVID stuff too, then like, like, cause what would you, would you guys have to go down to as far as capacity? Like if you're running a thousand people a day, what were you down to in the, in the worst parts? Yeah. And, and by the, you know, a thousand was more on the weekends, you know, during the week we're slower. So, but, uh, but yeah, we, we went down to zero for two months. Wow. So they had a stay at home order and we had to completely shut it down uh, for two months. And then we reopened and, and people started to come back and uh, our members, you know, they, they were able to spread out. That's the one benefit I think with COVID is it's shown a lot of people that, Hey, you don't just have to work nine to five and you don't just have to go into the office. So we're getting a lot more people that are bringing their computers down here, jumping on the Wi-Fi and getting their work done. But the dog's yeah. able to and then they get to bring their around. dogs and the dogs got a, a better activity life and they're getting more. What an amazing benefit you're bringing to your community. Yeah. And that, that's, I think the other piece is, you know, just connecting with the community and uh, 
providing a, a space that brings people together. You know, I've seen, and I always say this, it's probably, people probably laugh of the bar when they hear this, but I say, I see so many times somebody that I, I know both people, I know that one person is on one end of the political and economic mm-hmm. spectrum and the other person is on the other political end and economic spectrum. And yet they're sitting there talking to each other for, you know, a couple hours or they're happy to see each other and they're regular get together. And, you know, I think that provides a safe space for people to have real conversations and to sort of break down those barriers that we, those walls that we build up. Um, that's what I'm most proud of. And, and I think what we can really build on here at Bar K. So any mm. opportunities that we can team up with people to do that. I think that's, that's what I'm excited about. One last thing too. The other thing that I was really impressed with your guys' branding is on point. Like all of your guys' swag and merch. I still rock my bar. I should have, I should have wore it for today's podcast. My, my Bar K hat, like Christy still, um, uh, there's one that's like, it's about bringing everybody together. I'm trying to remember what the, what was on coexist, the maybe. coexist. It was the coexist t-shirt. Yeah. Like it's not just a t-shirt with a dog on it or a logo. Like everything has like some impact or it and it's an inspiring, or it's a, just a good quality design. Like really it, everything's top notch. Like, and, and that is in my opinion, difficult to come by anymore. Like every, there's so many people that are trying to just sell on cheap and fast and, and it can come off as kind of insulting to me sometimes where it's like, well, what about the fact that I actually care about my dogs and my families and how I look when I'm going there and you guys like nail all of it, all of it, all of it. Well, thank you. It doesn't feel like that, you know, and of course, you know, we, <laughs> you know, that that's actually not true. We did not nail all of it, uh, but it's, it's nice that it's so uh, really appreciate that. And we, we work really hard to think about the experience through others, you know, through our, our guests eyes, our members and our guests and people who come here. And um, I think if you, if you try to take that stance, then you're probably going to make better decisions. Uh, but they're sometimes hard and, and sometimes it's, you know, one of the team um, Labe's really good at that. I think pushing people to try to be excellent uh, when the easier way is to do something uh, simple. And yeah. I think it's, there's a lot to be said too about bringing high quality experiences and like this kind of luxury experience to a community level so that it still feels very much like any dog and any person can enjoy it. And it feels really nice, you know? I would say it's a comfortable, like not even so much luxury as just a comfortable space for, for dog parents. And that, again, that's unique, like you've brought up before. Mm. So I think the only part that's just, I was saying, we just, we wanted to make it, you know, reachable for Mm -hmm. everyone. So, you know, we didn't, uh, the memberships aren't, you know, priced sky high. Um, you know, they're attainable. The day passes are, you know, pretty reasonable. And of course, anybody again, can how much in. is a day pass? A uh, day pass is $10. Wow. Yeah. So you can bring your dog all day. You can, you know, bring your dog and come back later. Not, you can't leave your dog, but, you know, you could come back later that afternoon. Uh, you know, and memberships aren't, you know, they're 225 uh, annual membership. Um, wow. So I, I think what we wanted to do was to ensure that the people that were, were coming, there was still a value in it that we, we want to attract people that were more likely to spend money on their dogs, but that doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're wealthy, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a big portion of the people that come here, uh, probably paycheck to paycheck. And yet they put the value in their relationship with their dogs and that's where they put their money. And so, you know, we wanted to make it attainable for them, but also to be able to attract people that if you just made it free for everybody, for their dogs to come in, then I think you get a lot of people who don't, probably value their dog relationship as much. Right. Mm. And that's that. Wow. That's that super I was powerful. Talking about. That, yeah. that feeling of being understood and around like-minded people, like everybody's there, not with their For one dog, reason, but they're there with their family members. Mm. And that's, and that was a, a, it's a great filter. Super cool. Hmm. All right. We have unfortunately come to the end of our show. I yeah. know the worst part is that we can't just so go quick. hop out back and grab a beer. I don't know. I think the worst part is that we have to listen to Jason's dog. Deck. No, that's the uh, best part. All right. So um, if you're not familiar, Jason does close the show in a very special way. Every single podcast episode, we like to do one of Jason's most infamous hashtag dog dad joke. So Jason, the floor. Okay. No, I've got one here. I need to make sure that. Um... Was he just going through all of his paperwork? Yeah, no, I. Uh... So Sylvia has told a joke 
that I don't know about because she kicked me off the show to spend time with Christy. Mm -hmm. So if this is the joke, you need to stop me. I thought you said you listened to everything. Oh, no, I, didn't, I didn't listen to yours. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. What did the hungry Dalmatian say when he ate his dinner? This isn't the one. That's not what he said. This just isn't. <laughs> okay. Proceed. All right, all Proceed. Right. What did the hungry Dalmatian say when he ate his dinner? Wow. That hit the spot. Uh. <laughs> that one I liked. <laughs> there you go. You... David is completely unamused. Uh, you, you probably want to get rid of the char charcuterie board or whatever that word is and start putting dog jokes on the menus instead yeah this is uh i i just i you couldn't see me writing down but t-shirt ideas <laughs> so yeah we well, i the, think we, we have a dalmatian coming up a dalmatian meetup coming up in like two weeks we do one every sunday for different groups and breeds and uh, it's a lot of fun we'll usually do like some online trivia um beforehand like just some on our social yeah. and uh, i might put that in our dalmatian. there you go so i'll tag you if i do Love yes it. please all right Oh my goodness. Well, David, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. This was amazing. I really appreciate you having me on and I would love we will to have, have you back out here. We will, and I think we will be there. Ideas we need to talk about. Yes, please. Yes. We're on it. Let's do this. All right. Wow. Just wanted to take a quick minute as per usual to thank our amazing guests, David and Barkay, uh, my co-host Jason for, you know, delivering a dog dad joke that actually made me laugh today. Hey, thanks. And um, also to all of our listeners who continually come back every week and support us. Thank you. We love you. Um, we have some exciting things planned so that we can all get together finally and do stuff with you. And um, if there's a topic, personality or event that we're not talking about on the Dogish podcast, please let us know because we want to. Or that you want to hear more of. Yeah, we like, can bring someone back. Yeah, tell us who you were just like, no, 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 you left us. I hanging. need more. Yes, please tell us. And if you're not already, come on, guys, hit that subscribe button. It's not hard. Stay up to date on all the latest shows, giveaways, etc. that we have cooking for you. Cannot wait to join you all next week right here on the Doggish Podcast. Um, till then. Bye-bye. <laughs>